Let's begin our service. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I think if you like, you can stand. And um, it's just good to be here this morning. Thank God. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. I will call upon the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord reigneth. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. The Lord reigneth, blessed be the rock, blessed be the God of my salvation. Blessed the Lord. The Lord reigneth, blessed be the rock, blessed be the God of my salvation. The Lord reigneth, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the God of my salvation. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, he has the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me, who can stand before us when we call on that great name? Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Victory, victory. We have the victory, victory, oh victory, we have the victory, it's a highway to heaven, none can walk up there. But the pure in heart, it's a highway to heaven. I am walking up the king's highway. My way gets brighter, my way gets lighter. Walking up the king's highway. There's joy in knowing with him I'm going, walking up the king's highway. It's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there, 
But the pure in heart is a highway to heaven. I am walking up the King's highway. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my for he's my rock. He's my rock. Yes. He's my fortress. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's your rock. He's your fortress. He's my rock. He's my fortress. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. Woo. Good morning, Progressive. Today our scripture reading is going to come from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 12. Give you a moment to find your place, and we'll begin reading the scriptures. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable acceptable and perfect for by the grace given to me I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned for as in one body we have many members and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and, in, in, and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, in proportion to our faith, if service, in our service, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhort in his exhortation, to the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zealous, with zeal, the one who does not act of mercy with, with cheerfulness. Let love be genuine, abhor that which is evil, hold fast to that which is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not, do not be slow in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Now let us bow our hearts for a word of prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come this morning to say thank you. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning, clothed in our right mind. Dear God, we know so many have lied down last night but didn't get up. So we're grateful this morning. And dear God, we come this morning 
to say thank you. Thank you, God, for keeping us all week and bringing us out to the house of prayer this morning. You've been good. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. God, we don't deserve it, but it's your grace and mercy has kept us. So we say thank you. But God, we want to pause right here to ask you this morning to please forgive us of our sins against thee. Lord, we have done the things you say don't do and left undone the things you said do. So God, we come confessing this morning, please forgive us. You said in your word, if we come and confess our sins, you'd be just to forgive us. Lord, we come today confessing. Dear God, we come today praying for those who are not able to come out to the house of prayer. Dear God, we know that somebody wants to come but are not able this morning. And dear God, we pray for them today. Dear God, we pray for the sick and set in today. Dear God, somebody is hurting in their body and they're asking you, Lord, to please touch them. So God, we come this morning asking you to look on the sick and the afflicted. Dear God, we also ask you to look on the leaders of our nation. Dear God, you know that you hold the leaders in your hand and they're appointed by you, oh God. They hold office because you allow it. So God, we come asking you to guide them today. Lord, we're not able, but you are, Heavenly Father. So we ask that you look on them today. And dear God, we ask you to look on the homeless, the, the uh, sick again, Heavenly Father. We ask to God today, somebody, Lord, is seeking a job and don't know where to turn, but God, we ask you this morning to touch their heart and regulate their mind and lead them where to go, oh God, and touch those that are doing the hiring, Heavenly Father. So God, we come today because we need you. And dear God, we want to close our prayer by just saying hallelujah, praise your name today, for you're worthy. You're worthy, oh God. You're worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. today. Yes. Lord, we love you. 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 You are worthy. You 
Thank you, Jesus. Can we all just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Tori. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather to be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses and land. I'd rather I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be, than to be a king of a vast, of a vast domain or be held in sin, in sin's dread sway, oh Lord. I'd rather, I'd rather have Jesus than it, than anything this old world can afford, can afford today. I'd rather, I'd rather have Jesus than men, men's applause i'd rather yes i'd rather be faithful to his dear cause i'd rather i'd rather have jesus than wonderful and worldwide fame i'd rather i'd rather be true to his holy, to his holy name. Then to be, then to be the king of a vast, of a vast domain, or be held, or to be held in sin's dress way. Oh Lord, I'd rather. I'd rather have Jesus than in, than anything this old world can afford today. Than to be, than to be the king of a vast, of a vast domain, or be held. In sin, in sin's dread sway, oh Lord, I'd rather, I'd rather have Jesus than in, than anything this old world can afford, can afford today. Oh. How I love Jesus, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, how I love Jesus, why? Because he first loved me to me he is so wonderful to me he is so wonderful
I love Jesus. How I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. wonderful in your life this morning. Has he been good to you? All right. Don't you know he loved us first, though? While we were yet sinners, he died for us. That's how wonderful he is. See, we need to keep that in mind. But I'd just like to start off this morning thanking Pastor Stuckey for allowing me to use his podium here and uh, to share a message with you here in person and those on Zoom. But our God is wonderful. He is mighty, right? How do we respond to his love and the goodness he shows to us? <clears throat> and I was going to uh, speak today from Romans 12. One and two are my main verses. And just as a reminder, on Tuesday mornings, uh, starting this Tuesday, we're going to be in Romans 12. So you may want to tune in. This is a prelude to what you might get on Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock. Marvin will be teaching it. And <clears throat> verses 1 and 2 reads as such. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your, which is your reasonable service. And then he goes on, he says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. And, and Paul wrote this letter to the Romans, right? He had shared with them in the previous chapters. He had talked to them about grace, justification, sanctification, and some other things. That's why he started off, therefore, he said, I beseech you, right? Um, and beseech, we don't use this word. That's not a word that you hear every day. But when someone says, I beseech you, they're, they're a pleading with you. This is a plea that he was pleading to the, uh, the Roman church at that time. It says, beseech to beg urgently or anxiously and then it said, plea is a request made in an urgent and emotional manner. So you can hear Paul pleading to the Roman church at that time, right? But I want you to hear that plea today. Because that plea that uh, when he wrote the letter to the Romans is just as necessary for our lives today. And saints, you know we are saints, right? When he started off Romans, he said to the saints at Rome, but don't you know you're saints? What does it say? We've been called out, right? We've been washed in the blood, right? Jesus Christ is our Savior. That's what the saying is. So he was, he was beseeching the saints in Rome, and he's beseeching us today. And he says, do not be conformed to this world, right? Th this world is not our friend, right? And see, Paul understood... Um, over here it says, if, you, if ye were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, 
but I have chosen you out of this world, therefore the world hateth you. The world hates us, saints. The world hates the things of God. The world can't stand the name Jesus. When you say Jesus in the world, it just shakes the world up. I mean, it, it makes people mad. You, you can get hurt. You can even get killed in some places by just saying the name Jesus. You can say any other name. But when you say the name Jesus, right, something happens to people, right? It even stirs believers up because sometimes we're not living right and we hear Jesus, it makes us shake, right? No, because it's, it lets us see where we are. It, it lets us see where we are, right? And, and over in 1 John 2, 15 through 17, it says, do not love the world. It says, do not love the world or the things of the world, right? If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You hear Paul's urgent plea? Do not love the world, right? And I need to be examining myself. If I find myself loving the world, the love of God might not be in me, right? Because you know our heart is deceitful. My heart's deceitful, right? It's, it's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So I got to be careful what I think I know, right? So, and then it says, for all that is, is, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And then he went on with his, in this warning here, this is, uh, this is John though, he says, and the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So he's, he's pleading with us not to conform to this world, because the world hates us. Do you know the world is enemy of God, right? The world is at enmity with God, and at enmity means actively opposed. The world is actively opposed to the things of God. Can't you understand Paul's plea now? It's like you have a child, you see them heading to, the, to destruction. He said, hold on, don't go that way. You know, it's not good, right? He might even bring tears to your eyes. I'm talking about an urgent plea, because Paul had that type of love toward the saints. You know, it could bring him to tears. Tears. He had an urgency for the things of, of the body of Christ and the ones, the people of Christ. So, the world is actively opposed. The world system is actively opposed to the things of God. And also, we're told that the Antichrist is uh, uh, the spirit of Antichrist is working even right now. So the world is at enmity with Christ, I mean, uh, is at enmity after the opposing God, and it's against Christ too. Now, see, a lot of people in the world, they say, oh, I love God, right? I know God, I love God. But when you say Jesus, they say, I can't get with Jesus, right? But Jesus has told us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through the Son, right? So, in this world, one of the big problems in this world, because it is actively opposing God, the world is full of philosophies, right? Full of philosophies, all kind of books on philosophy. And do you know that most of those books are opposed to God? These are men's perspective on things how creation came about. Came about. You know, the, these philosophers want to come from monkeys, you know. They can have that. I, I'm glad to know that I was created in the image of a living God, right? I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm created in the image of a living God. So this worldview is shaped by men's philosophies who don't know the truth. They think they do, but they don't. And over in Colossians 2, 8, it says, Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy, empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. See, Christ is a stumbling block, right? The world 
would have you believe that God can't get his tooth out, right? The, the world with this philosophy is, has it out there that the Bible isn't God's word, right? And people want to grab on to that. Men wrote the Bible and all this and that. But God tells us through the word, his revealed word in the Bible, which I set all my faith in, he says that the book, uh, that these scriptures were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Nobody ever got up on their own accord and decided to write the scriptures. Uh, they were inspired as men spoke, and then they were written down at, an, at another time, right? So th these scriptures were inspired by the Holy Spirit. But, but the philosophies of the world tell you, no, man wrote these things, right? And I was thinking about it. Why don't the men of the world want to believe that the Bible is true? Huh? You ever think about that? Because if they come to the understanding that the Bible is true, that means they're going to have to change some things. That means they're going to have to change. That's just going to shake up their whole foundation because now I'm going against what I know is the truth of God, right? And do you know there's penalties for going against the truth of God? We'll get to that later, but there's penalties about going against the uh, truth of God. But these men, uh, there's just so much. They want to... Uh, praise ancestors these days. They want to praise dead people that can't do nothing for them. And they want to praise people that were lost. Some of our ancestors, I hate to say, on their way to hell. Or they waiting for judgment in hell right now. But they want to call up on the ancestors. Ancestors can't help nobody. The only one that can help us is the living Christ who died on that cross for our sins was buried and was rose again on the third day. That's who you better try to call up on. And see, this is what Paul was trying to get uh, them to understand and us to understand now. Don't be conformed to the philosophies of this world, but be transformed by the renewing your mind, which is the word of God. You know what I need? I need to take in a diet of God's word, which is the bread of life, right? I need to follow that down by some living water, which is that same word. That's where I need to get my strength from today, right? Not from all this stuff I'm reading, all these YouTubes, all this foolishness on social media. This is even distracting people in the church. They getting confused. Oh, do you think that's true? You, you stepping away from the truth. And one thing I learned, you can't get away from the truth and think you're going to find truth. But that's what the world is doing today. God has given them a truth, right? Because over in Romans 1, it tells how God, he has placed in man a knowledge of himself, right? He says, and even in his creation, man could see his handiwork. They can understand the things of God, even his Godhead, right? But man refused to accept that truth. Man decided he want to uh, worship other men and, and worship uh, uh, other things in creation, making idols to themselves, right? They had the truth. They start moving away from the truth, and they think they wise, right? God tells them... Uh, in Romans 1, 21, because although they knew God, see, they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but they became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. See, all these wise people writing these books and things, they foolish. They truly are. You know, but we be running to try to read some of that crap and stuff, thinking we're going to find truth. And you're going to find how somebody don't have the truth give you the truth, right? So anyway, so they professing to be wise, they became fools. And, and what we see in this world today, you see it all over. They're mocking us, saints. They think we're fools because we're holding on to the truth that saved us. They're mocking us, and they got scoffers. They're mocking and scoffing God's truth, 
trying to find it on the outside. But do you know, over in Proverbs 14, it says, scoffer seeks wisdom and does not find it, but knowledge is easy to him that understands. See, when I understand the truth of God, I'm going to hold on to that truth. And it becomes easier and easier to understand. See, when people get outside the truth, they just get more uh, confused. And they look in here and there. But you done left the truth, and you're out seeking something else. There's no truth outside the truth. And we need to keep that. This is part of uh, Paul's plea, which I see today. In, in Jude, uh, well, before I go to Jude, like I said, these people are seeking all these things and they think they have found the truth. And they come to churches and they try to present their case to us, right? And uh, we already been uh, sanctified, set apart. We're on our way to heaven because we have put our faith in God's truth in Christ, right? But see, these people, they think they have it right. And that's why Proverbs warns us that there's a way that seems right in a man, but its end is the way of death. See, all these people trying to find the truth outside of what God has already presented are on their way to destruction, right? They are on their way to destruction. And over in Jude 17, uh, it says, but you, beloved, Remember the words which were spoken by, spoken by the apostles of our Lord Jesus, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who will walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the spirit. And see, we even see these divisions in the church today. I saw it at North Creek, it was funny. And you had the mass people in the unmasked people, division. But we have a spirit of unity. See, but when we get in the mindset of the world, it, it causes us to act like the world. We start getting divisions, right? We, we got white churches and Chinese churches and all this old stuff, right? Because we're in the pattern of the world, right? And, so, and God didn't intend it to be like that. He, he, does, he uh, made it so we could be all one, right? One body, one body that's been redeemed by the blood of the Lord, right? So it, 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 to go on, it says in Colossians, then if you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your minds above and not on earthly things. That's what we're supposed to do. That's the transforming and renewing of our mind, setting our minds on heavenly things, embracing God's truth and letting it dwell in us richly. We're supposed to let his truth dwell in us rich richly where we're unshaken because if we don't get it deep in the inside, we can be shaken by these philosophies, by uh, the, like, the philosophies of men because Satan... You know, it's not just in flesh and blood that we fight against, right? There's a whole spiritual realm we fight against, wicked, right? The Bible tells us, tells us that principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. This is part of this world system. This is why Paul was urgently saying, don't be conformed to this world. Because, see, you can't be conformed to the world and conformed to Christ at the same time. Those two don't go together. That's why we as saints, we need to be conformed to Christ and not the world. We need to start setting some of these worldly things aside that are confusing us. And there are many out there. You know, you let the Lord search your soul and see what's confusing you. But there are many things out there that are confusing us that we, that we embrace, right? So Paul, uh, his urgent plea, is that we don't embrace the world, but we embrace Christ. And over in Romans 6, 12, and 13, he, he, he's telling them, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you to obey its lust, and do not permit members as instruments of, un don't present your members as instruments uh, of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, 
and your members as instruments of righteousness, right? Now, this is the good and acceptable will of God. This is what we're supposed to prove in our living. You know, we're not supposed to be living as well. We should look different. We should actually look different. Our whole consciousness uh, should stand out before people where they look at us and they say something different. Almost like with Moses when he came down. Because we have the Holy Spirit living in us. Do you understand that? So we got to learn how to embrace the Holy Spirit so it can manifest. See, God wants the glory, right? He placed his Holy Spirit inside of us so he can get the glory, right? So we'll be able to walk in righteousness instead of unrighteousness. So don't be conformed to this world. But then I got to go back to verse 1. I just wanted to start with two, where he says, I beseech you, brother, therefore, by the mercies of God. Don't you know that God has given you mercy? Because God, well, let me ask this question. Have you had any mercy from God? Do you realize that God has been merciful to you? Huh? Because he's truly been merciful to us, right? He's been so merciful while we were yet sinners. What did he do? He sent his son to die on the cross for us, right? He loved us so much as it tells us in John 3, 16. What does it say? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Didn't he say that? And over there in Romans, uh, not Romans, but uh, 1 Corinthians 15, what, what is the gospel? That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures, right? And see, the message of this cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. But to the, us that are being saved, it is the power of God. This is mercy. This is mercy, Right? This, this is show enough mercy that God has given us. In God's mercy, what are some of the aspects of his mercy? I, I looked at some of that because we take so many things for granted. When we use I statement, I take so many things for granted. I got to examine myself because I'm the only one that's going to have to stand in front of God for me. And you're going to have to stand in front of God for you. Right? So you better make sure that your salvation is, is sure. You know, don't be fooled thinking that you're walking right and you lost because it's going to be consequences. But one thing, those that have, been, <clears throat> that have been saved, when he says the mercy of God, mercy, we're saved from, in, through his mercy, we're saved from the wrath of God. Through his mercy, we get the forgiveness of sins. We're pardoned from eternal punishment, which is the lake of fire. That's what eternal, because first you go to hell, then death and hell thrown into the lake of fire, right? That is the ultimate death. Do you know through God's mercy, there's no condemnation on my soul? Judgment has been taken away. I've been delivered. This comes through God's mercy. That's some hallelujah stuff. Then you say, oh, I love Jesus, right? He's wonderful, right? Because of his mercy toward me. He, he's truly wonderful. But in his mercy, he's done those things for us. Don't you know he's given us a great salvation? You hear that term, such a great salvation. Do you really understand how great that salvation is? I don't think our human minds really understand how great the salvation that God has given us, right? God did it all for us, right? I was looking at, at that verse. It says we are saved by grace through faith, right? It is a gift of God, not of works, so no one can boast. So most people focus on the, the grace, right, and not looking at the faith. Because if I had my own faith of myself, I could boast. But see, God is the one that allowed me to have saving faith. They came through his grace. 
empty. So I can't even say I had the faith. Somebody could stand up, man, you should have believed and had faith like me. It don't work like that. God has given us everything. That's why I say this salvation is great. God has done a, he gave us the perfect sacrifice, his son Jesus, right? Who shed his blood for the redemption of our sins, right? This is a wonderful salvation. Through this grace, we get salvation, eternal life. We get identification in Christ. We get to have a relationship with God as his child. I'm adopted into the heavenly family, right? Righteousness is imputed to me. You see how great the salvation is? Sanct uh, I'm sanctified, set apart <coughs> for God. I'm redeemed by the blood of Christ. I'm placed under his grace and not the law. Sin has, sin's power has been removed from my life. I'm given the Holy Spirit, which I've sealed, that lives within me to guide me and show me. I call the Holy Spirit uh, God's GPS. Because when I'm going the wrong way, God's GPS, GPS be warning, warning, turn around, go this way. See, God's uh, salvation is great. You know, I can't go wrong if I follow God's GPS, right? God's GPS is going to take me to my home. My home's not here on this earth. My home is in heaven, all right? So he's given me his Holy Spirit. He's promised me help in all my affliction and tribulation. There's nothing to be worried about. We are God's children. It, greater is he who is in me, in us, than he is in the world. Right? And I need to stay close to that one. I don't need to get outside his truth where I get confused. Right? I have assurance of a standing in God's election. Do you know I've been elevated to a royal priesthood? I've been given a job as an ambassador of heaven? See, God is good. This comes out of this great salvation. I have a confidence of coming glory. And I have a confidence that I will never be separated from the love of God. Not life, no death, or nothing can separate me from the love of God. This is a great salvation today. So Paul was saying, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you, set your, uh, that you uh, present yourselves holy. Let me slow down here. <laughs> by the mercies of God that you present your bodies is a living sacrifice, holy, a, a separate God, which is your reasonable service. And that takes me back to what shall I render the Lord for all his benefits for me, toward me? What's, and that's what I need to have in mind for the mercies he's given me, for the grace he's given me, for this great salvation he allowed me to participate in, right? He called me out of the darkness into the light. That's why I have to give him praise. That's what makes you want to say hallelujah. Don't you know we are saved today? We, we, we're homeward bound, as it says. So, in closing today, <laughs> I'm going to close it on up because they say if you talk too long, people don't remember what you're talking about. So, you know, some of our minds might be getting a little sleepy now and stuff. But in 1 Peter 13 to 20, we have a call. And it's a call to a holy living. It says, so, and this has to do with that um, transforming your mind also. So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Don't you know self-control comes, it's one of the fruits of the spirit that comes through uh, being saved. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. So you must live as God's obedience children. Do not be conformed to this world. Don't slip back into your old ways in living to satisfy your own desires. I need to be dying daily, not transform into the ways of this world. Paul's pleading to us. <clears throat> you, did, you didn't know any better then. Once upon a time, I didn't know any better when our sin had power in my life, but that's been broken now. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. 
For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. Did you hear that? You must be holy because I am holy. That's not if I want to. That's if I understand the great salvation God has given me. I want to strive to live that way. And remember that your heavenly father who you pray to has no favorites. He will judge and reward you according to what you do. The wrath of God is on all unbelievers, but there's no condemnation on us through God's mercy. Praise God. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residence. We're temporary here. So you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. So we got nothing from my ancestors but trouble and a sinful nature. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these days, he has been revealed. So praise the Lord this morning. And, and, and I just pray that the Lord may be speaking. I know he was speaking to me as I was getting prepared. I hope he's been speaking to uh, someone today to maybe motivate us a little bit more, hearing Paul's plea. And we need to be pleading with one another. We're not supposed to see our brothers and sisters in a fault and just let it slide. We're supposed to remind them of who they are and whose they are, right? This is why he gives us gifts to edify the church. That's later on down in verse 12. It talks about how we're supposed to use our gifts to glorify God and strengthen the body and love one another, right? So this is the invitation today. God may have been speaking to someone today in a way that they've never heard, right? And I just pray that you respond to the voice of God today. God tells us in Romans 10:9 that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved or you shall be saved. That means it's a done deal. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I just pray if anybody's here, you can talk to me. Yeah. Some of the elders around or deacons, if you came with somebody, you can ask him, who could I talk to? Because the Lord is talking to me right now, and I want to respond. Because today is the accepted day to respond to the Lord. Tomorrow's not promised. Don't walk out and say, I'll do it later. You may not have a later. Because it's only by the grace of God that we're here today, and we woke up this morning. So if God is talking to your heart, it's, he's, he's pleading harder than Paul could have ever pleaded. He desires that no one would be lost. So I just pray that you will respond today. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you with thanksgiving, Father. We just thank you for this great salvation, Father. You gave us all, Father. You did it all for us, Father. And we just give you praise today, Father. I just pray that someone may respond today. You know who they are, Father. I just pray that you will continually draw them unto yourself, Father. I pray for all the families represented here, that you may bless all the households, Father, because without you we can do nothing, Father. But as your word says, through Christ Jesus, we can do all things, Father. You tell us in your word, for those that trust you, all things work together for the good, to those that love you and called according to your purpose. So we're going to put all our faith and trust in your word, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now, comes now, come to Jesus, come to Jesus just now, he will save you, he will save you, he will save you. 
Um, we hope you enjoyed today's um, fulfilling ser um, service today. On this, um, I will be announcing um, the announcements for August 22nd, I believe. But for today's announcement, it's just going to be some prayer requests that, um, and um, just, um, just please keep in mind for the following people on this prayer list. Um, first is Sister Renee Clark, who is not here today because she's um, going to be um, she is resting for surgery this week on August 25th. And uh, please pray, if, like, give a big prayer to um, Sister Diane, Ken's best friend's family. Uh, recently, she passed away last week, and along with her father, who passed away two days afterwards, um, bo since both of them um, um, died due to COVID. And uh, please pray for her son, who is also on life support as well. So please keep uh, keep in mind of them as well. And finally, Sister Jean Johnson's nephew, who is in Maryland and her great nephew in San Francisco who both caught COVID. So they are, um, so please keep in um, mind of them. Please pray for them and ho hope that um, they'll get better. And um, these are the <laughs> announcements. Thank you for listening to the sermon and I will pass your attention back to um, the benediction. Thank you. Our benediction <clears throat> and, may, and may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. 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 walks beside me, angels to guide me, walking up the king's highway. It's the highway to heaven. None can walk a bit. Start while I'm talking, walking up the king's highway. There'll be a blessing, you'll be possessing, walking up the king's highway. It's a highway to heaven, none can walk up there, but the pure in heart, it's a highway. Have a blessed week, everyone.